الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا زدنا علما وفقينا إذا علمتنا If there is no question about this particular hadith, shall I move to the next hadith? Any question? Okay. Hadith number 13. Umada ibn Samit. Okay, go ahead. Read it in English, shall I? Okay. 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 Radiallahu anhu reports that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said The one who does not venerate our elders, show mercy to our youngsters and knows the rights of our learned ones is not from my own community In the previous hadith we spoke a lot about our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As Muslims all relations comes through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us to do with our parents, and these are the dearest persons to us, our parents, spouses, offspring, uh, and you name it. And, and, and those who are a little bit more far, and you name it, the relatives, the neighbors, and you name it. All of those matters, it comes through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslim judge his life, you know, according to it. Uh, no doubt, everyone, he, he has his own relation with the others, you know. But here, the Muslim, in all of these relations, even the dearest one, and for his relatives, his parents, and you name it, this is going to be governed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why uh, you see how the Prophet ﷺ used to deal with his wives, how he used to deal with his uh, family, with his children. Example of it, even though uh, one of the most noble one is Sayyidah Fatima, his daughter, he said, I swear by Allah, if she is going to rob or steal, I'm going to amputate her hand. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. Just to show, this is was given by him ﷺ as a an assumption which is in our view it's almost impossible to happen but this this just to tell us that everything all looks regardless how kind how merciful is the prophet everything is going to be governed according to his relation with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the muslim in general he should have the same behavior the, the same attitude relation with others in general, we, when we say others, yeah, that's me besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or everyone else should be governed according to his relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first important point that we should highlight. Yes? Sayyidi, where can you find these rights? Where can you find these relations? Whereabouts in the Quran? This is uh, mentioned in the Quran, mentioned in many of the hadiths. Yes, and in Riyadh al-Salihin in particular, we are going to find some of these ahadiths. You have this relation mentioned also in uh, Surah Al-Nur, in Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah Al-Ahzab, uh, Surah Al-Nisa, okay? Yeah, these are the major references in the Quran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Nur, Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Hujurat. Uh, you have the inheritance law, which give you a hint, you know, about how your relation should be with everyone. So this is was the first important point. That the second important point, for sure, we don't care a lot, you know, about the first point, you know, which we should care much more about it. But here, the second point that I was about to say, this we neglected a lot, much more, which is what, even though. The most important relation to me as a 
slave to Allah is my relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we said, you know, everything comes through it or after it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy and kindness and uh, uh, being uh, sufficient, you know, of no need of any of his servants, usually he forgives. He bypass, he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept our deficiencies <coughs> in his relation. But on the other hand, the most serious or the most uh, dangerous relation is our relation with the other. Why? Because these people, they will not forget usually. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ And everyone is going to run away from, not his enemy, no, from the closest relative, his brother, his mother and father, and his wife and uh, children. And this really, I'm sorry to say it, we as Muslims who are too bad about. Sometimes, sometimes, don't misunderstand me. The non-Muslims, they sound a little bit better. Perhaps not with their relation with uh, their relatives. They are not good, you know, in their relation with their relatives. But with their relation to a human being, you know, at least you find sometimes myself as a Muslim, I should learn from anyone. But I, you see, here, you find them, I don't know about the coming generation, you know, but I know about the old generation, and uh, they, they have some respect to the person as a human. I'm sorry to tell you, Yabi, this is not our Islam, but this is our reality nowadays. As Muslims, we are not, we are not as, good as them, you know, in this look. Whereas we should be better, much better than them. And I hear a lot of stories, you know, of disrespect, of uh, malpractice, of misbehavior, you name it, you know. Which, again, I don't know about the coming generation, you know, but about the old one, <coughs> many of these instances, they will, at least they will show themselves as better. And to be honest with you much more, this description was given to them you know, by Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As hundreds of years ago. That these people, even though they were his enemy and he used to fight against them, he said these people, they have five unique characters They are the most supportive of anyone treated unjustly. They are too helpful to the weak people, you know, like any woman or youngest or whatever. They are, uh, perhaps these are the two major description regarding the others, okay? So the rest three may not be as such, you know. But what I highlight, yani, in the old days, and this is narrated in Muslim that Amr al Az gave them these specialties, you know, or that they are good, good in them, you know. And as Muslim, you know, whenever I see anyone is good any, in anything which has been highlighted by my religion, I should be much more bitter than them in this. Okay. So here, I find significant deficiency. Okay, about our respect, about our relation, about uh, how we behave with each other, you know. Again, I'm going to repeat myself, I don't know about the new generation, you know, but we should be much better off than this way that has been expressed, you know, in a different way. Okay, so we should respect each other, we should uh, 
uh, get along, along with each other, we should have good relations. Uh, for sure, I cannot deny, you know, the other hand, uh, they are too bad, you know, in their social relations regarding marriage, or regarding uh, uh, relatives, and you name it. Uh, I know about uh, their problems, you know, there. And as I, I, I said, we should be selective, you know, we should see what they are, humane act, what we, they are, they have nice and good uh, way of living, you know. We should pick it up, you know, because this is part of what the Prophet ﷺ has instructed us. Rather, here in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who did not practice it is not from my community. And this is the, the hardest thing, you know, to, to hear. It's not of my community, what does it mean? It may mean many things, you know, and the worst, you know, to be elsewhere, to be in hellfire, okay? And this is not as you may expect that it's an easy, no. This is perhaps one of the major factors to make people go to hellfire. The major factor is not your sins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no. The major factor is going to be your misbehavior or your sins with the others. Okay, that's why some of you, you may, may hear me, you know, all the, all the time keep speaking about those issues, you know, because really this bothers me a lot. And I feel we as Muslims, we are too deficient in it. Examples. You have many, many examples. You have this young person, you know, who is not religious. When he started to re became religious person, what is the first sign to be shown in him? To be tough on his parents. To be not good to his brothers. And I'm sorry to say, this will give the other the impression that this is the way of religion. This is the way religion should be practiced. I'm not speaking about you, I speak about Syria, my country, okay? One person came to me that he attended one mosque, you know, like Halaqa, you know, and, uh, and they instructed him, you should do this for your father, you should be against him, you should do this, you should do that. And I told him, you are completely wrong. From the beginning to the end. I cannot imagine anyone, you know, religious person, you know, behave and ask the other, instruct the other to behave in such a way. You know? In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah instructed me to respect my uncle, it's not his father, the uncle Sayyidina al-Abbas, the way Allah instructed you to, to behave with me. Yani, because some of the companions, they observed that the voice of the Prophet ﷺ went way down, and his movement, you know, when he was in the presence of the Abbas. And they were scared, what's going on? Is he sick? And any problem, anything? And he said, no, I was instructed to behave in front of my uncle the way, you see, you see, and this tells us part, let me, let me put it in this way, part of our religion is your relation with the others. And when I say the others, from the closest one to the most far one. Okay, and then all those matters has been regulated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not my choice, it's not your choice, okay? When the Prophet ﷺ spoke about his dearest daughter, you know, in this way, he showed us when he's going to be tough and when he's going to be merciful, okay? And we should guide ourselves in the same way, in the same pattern. I know, I heard this story, you know, back in Syria, you see, in Damascus, we consider ourselves like, I mean, 
civilized more than the villages people, you know. And one of those village, village people who used to be too tough, you know, and his wife. And then he became student of one famous sheikh in Damascus. He has been changed completely. His wife said, you should have, you know, go to that particular sheikh from there. From many, many years ago, you know, we wasted, we wasted our life. <laughs> you see? And this is the reality of Islam. Okay? The toughness, the misbehavior, this is, has nothing to do with our religion. Okay? Uh, the, the, the tradition of the Prophet is completely different. Here, the Prophet in this hadith gave us these guidelines, these broad uh, rules, you know, for us to have them, you know, done, you know, and uh, when you look at the reality, you are going to find everyone applicable, you know, in this rule. No one is going to be outside of it. See? And the warning behind that, you know, which scare me a lot, that is not of our community. Are we ready to get out of the community of the Prophet Are we ready to be considered, you know, not of his followers, you know? One companion did something and came to the majlis of the Prophet The Prophet Sallallahu is too nice and kind. Did not face him, he knows what he has done. He only turned his face in the opposite direction. Those companions, you know, they cannot help it, you know, how can, I, I, can I sit, you know, and the, the holy face is turned away of me? Cannot. And he moved to the other side. And the Prophet Sallallahu turned his face, you know. Said, Oh Rasulullah, what's the meaning of my life if your face is turned away from me? Ya Habibi. Ya Allah, Ya Habibi. And he did not see anything in his life, or I would rather say everything became ugly and dark and uh, not to be sought, you know, seen, you know, when the holy face is turned away of him. When we have this, I think this is much more severe statement, you know, than the turning the face. When the Prophet ﷺ said, what did he say? It's not from my community. And this, as if you have a portion and is amputated, you know, completely. That's why I, yeah, I feel myself, I'm not good enough, you know, in explaining to you the importance of these relations. We spoke a lot about the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, I love it, I love it. And really, I feel myself deficient, you know, speaking about it. But if the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go up and be upgraded, you know, and have high ranks, this relation with the other is for your survival. And you are not going to be saved, you know, if you misbehave or you have a lot of deficiency in there. The Prophet gave us these guidelines. Whoever is Older than you, you should show him your uh, respect. You should show him uh, that you are much way down than him, okay? You should, uh, even though in some communities, perhaps even in this community, they may consider this as putting himself down or humiliating himself, you know? But this is not our Islamic instruction. To kiss his hand, to go with him, you know, to the door, to uh, have him sit, him sit, sit in your, 
new place, to give him preference, you know, of uh, the nice food or the nice place or the nice uh, drink or whatever, you know. All those, th these, these are part, I cannot say part, you know, because he, the Prophet he said, out of my community. I mean, this is really for me unexplainable. Uh, I, uh, it's quite clear, you know, but I cannot speak about it because I, I look at it as too heavy, you know, and too, too severe, you know, too severe matter, you know. And I remember the statement of that particular companion. What's the meaning of my life? No meaning of life, you know, if I, I'm out of the community. I have to be much more thorough with you, you know. People here, they don't consider you exactly as British people. And if you are out of the community of the Prophet, that means you are no, nowhere, no place, no space. You don't have, you have nothing. Even though I shouldn't put them you know, at the same comparable uh, way, you know, because to be in the community of the Prophet and this is nothing equal to it, nothing similar to it. You see how important is it? It's inherited in uh, some books of Shamal called Dala'il Nubuwa by Abi Nu'ayn, Sayyidina Musa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, read about certain description about certain people, you know, and he said, oh my, oh Allah, make this my nation. He said, no, this is the nation of Ahmad. Then he spoke about other description. Oh Allah, make them my nation. He said, no, this is the nation of Ahmad. Third one, fourth one, I don't know how many. Then what did he say? He said, oh Allah, make me one of the nation of Ahmad. And as Qadr Iyad mentioned Shifa, that Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Isa in the hereafter, they asked the Prophet to include them in his nation. Sayyidina Ibrahim say, I was the one who gave you the name Muslims. So please make me in your nation. And Sayyidina Isa ibn Nuhal say, Oh Muhammad, there is no messenger between me and you, so consider me in your nation. So here, what I'm trying to say. These are the highest figures, you know, in our belief. Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Isa, Sayyidina Musa. They ask to be in the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Yourself and myself, we are in his nation, alhamdulillah, and this is the most favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. Firstly, we should recognize that this is favor, okay? We should recognize it. I'm sorry to tell you, you know, I hate to speak about this, you know. This favor. See, you know, if you own a house, yeah, um, like yourself, and you borrow big money to from your friends and stuff like that, and then one day somebody comes to you and gives you a check for eighty thousand pounds, ninety thousand pounds, and uh, months and months of you working very hard to pay this debt off, and then you feel so happy, immensely happy, you know. Um, so with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and being part of his community. As a Muslim, I assume you have to be more happy with knowing that you're part of the Prophet's community than when you receive this big check. So if you feel this weakness, that you don't feel this strong love for the Prophet like that Sahabi who said, what is my life if I have no connection with yourself? How can you uh, dissolve this relationship with the debt and have it with the Prophet in such a way that when somebody uh, says to you, what would you rather have, be the community of Rasulullah or have your mortgage paid off, you're more happy to stay in debt than to leave Rasulullah, because that's a bigger bounty of Allah. How do you do that? How to do it? 
As I said, you know, firstly by recognition of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to recognize this. That's why he said, this is verse in Surah Al-Imran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ مَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِمُهُمْ كِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَمٍ That's mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has significant favor on the believers to send a messenger from among themselves, you know, to recite the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on them and making tazkiyah to them and its both component and to teach them the holy book and the tradition of him, of his sallallahu alayhi wa even though they used to be misguided in very apparent misguidance, you know, before him sallallahu alayhi wa And this is the comparison about the two stages, you see, here in this uh, verse, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared them that he, they used to be in an apparent and manifested, you know, misguidance before <laughs> So first step, you should have recognition of it. Second step, you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Third step, you should try to follow, in particular, you collect the, this ahadith. We have few or more, more, much more than few ahadith that the Prophet ﷺ declared the one who did not do so or the one who did so is not of my community. You should try to pick up these ahadith and follow their instruction, avoid the bad description, go by the good description. Yes? Uh, so recognize, uh, could you shed light practically how would you recognize and how would you thank Allah practically? Okay. Most of you, I think, they were born, born as Muslims. This is great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it has a problem. Generally speaking, those who were born as Muslims, usually, they don't have this recognition. They don't know the significance of being Muslim. That's why those among you, you know, uh, attended the previous halaqa, you know, when I speak about Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi, how much he sacrificed of his time, of his money, of his life, you know, to be brought to the Prophet This an indirect way to me as a Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him of all of those difficulties, all of this hardship, and make it too easy to me. I shouldn't take it easy. Whatever I'm given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding with my religion, my Quran, my uh, teaching, my knowledge, you, na you, know, you name it, This is, I don't deserve it. This is not a right of me on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not something which is too easy. It's very valuable matter. It is completely by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is as described by the Prophet وسلم, and this was mentioned by Sina Bakr Siddiq, narrated it from the Prophet وسلم, no one is given much better than this. And the first, the most significant, Allah, we are drowned of the favors of Allah, all of us. But what was the most significant favor ever you give, you are given, is as mentioned in Arabic in the hadith, al yaqeen al yaqeen means certainty. The first point of yaqeen is what? Your belief. Comes at the top of your certainty. And the second one, al-afiyah. Al-afiyah, some people may 
call it as cure or he, to be uh, uh, to heal or no afia is much broader than this meaning afia mean to be saved okay yani uh, let's say all of you, your friends they got hungry you are not hungry this is afi allah subhanahu wa saved you all of your people, uh, uh, friends you know they traveled you know you stayed with your parents this is afia allah subhanahu wa saved you and your name afia is very broad word in arabic mean to be saved you know of those life. for sure to be saved of disease is afia no doubt about it even what that we may not imagine what is afia this is afia okay yani we feel afia to be, get cured which is completely opposite opposite of this okay uh, the prophet sallallahu told us about certain type of people he said those people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them live in afia what else Die, die in afia. This was afia, okay? <laughs> and they are going to be in the hereafter with afia. Or rather, no, not the, he said, they live in afia, die in afia, they enter the heaven with afia. <laughs> he made the long story short for them, okay? And they will enter heaven with afia. So he, Recognition of, firstly, your belief, and secondly, your hati. Okay? Firstly, your belief, this is what we try to say, okay? Uh, uh, this is my experience, I may be wrong, you know? Most Muslims who were, were born as Muslim, they will not recognize this. And we should have full recognition of it, okay? We should recognize it, should recognize the favor of it. I'm sorry to say, some Muslims, they may feel shame of it. Okay. They may feel that they are, they have been treated second hand, you know, or second level, you know, by it. Even though this may happen, you know, but when you feel, when you fully understand what you are, you have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so what? Let's me not be the second, let's say uh, the hundreds of it, okay? So what? Again, we ask Allah Afiyah. We don't ask to be tested, you know, by these tests. You know. But these tests may happen to some of us. A person has written the book, was imprisoned, you know, unjustly. Why do you think about it? You know, if someone is present unjustly, he feels the bitterness, you know, in everything. His sheikh wrote to him, be patient. Then he was connected and joined in a chain with a person which make his life much more miserable in the prison, you know. <laughs> He's connected to that person. He wrote this, okay, be patient. Then, I'm sorry to say it, you know, it's a little bit ugly, but that's what happened, you know. That patient got sick, you know, and he go to toilet every once in a while, and this one should move with him back and forth. And he wrote to his sheikh, he said, be patient. Come on, be patient, be patient, be patient. To what extent are you going to be patient? And his sheikh wrote him, do you want the belt put on him to be belt put on you? These old days, they used to have recognition of the non-Muslim by putting a belt you know, on them, okay? So he told him, you want the belt put on that particular person to be put on you? And you still have a lot of significant favor as long as your religion has been saved for you. Okay. As long as 
to compete with each other in a competition. You have Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Isa, and Sayyidina Ibrahim got involved in it. So again, to make the long story short, recognize it. Thank you, Allah, Allah, a lot, a lot. Make this lesson every day as the Prophet instructed us. Every morning, every evening, Asbahna ala fitrat al Islam. Asbahna ala fitrat al Islam. This is part of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say so. Asbahna ala fitrat al Islam. Wa kalimat al Ukhdas. Wa millati adina Ibrahim. Wa dini nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sorry. وديني نبينا محمد والتي أبينا إبراهيم حنيفة وما كان مشكا I'm going to repeat it أصبحنا على فطرة الإسلام وكلمة الإخلاص ودين نبينا محمد some narration وسنة نبينا محمد وملتي أبينا إبراهيم حنيفة وما كان مشكا in the evening we say I'm Sayyidah يعني we are in the morning according to the nature of Islam and we are have the sincere word which is la ilaha wa muhammad rasulullah and we are in the tradition of the prophet or the religion of the prophet and we are in the thoughts of sayyidina ibrahim who was hanif i think the pakistan they know hanif because they have this name I hear this name you know, among the Pakistani community, Hanif. What's the meaning of Hanif? Hanif, you have the common stream. The common stream, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they are non-believers. Okay? What is Hanif? The one who deviates himself about, of the common stream. Okay? وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Most of people, they are not believers. Okay? So this is the common stream. Hanif is deviated. Took side, you know, Hanifa. And he was not among those mushriks, you know, or kafir. So when the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to say the morning and the evening, for sure this is a reminder of us. And we should say it. Please try to, to practice it. And it was, the major purpose was to, to put this targhim and targhim for you. To give you some practical points, you know, to practice in your life. You may not find it as such in the beginning, you know, here, because we're speaking about sincerity and knowledge now. Okay? But inshallah, when we finish this knowledge sec section and to start with wudu and prayer, you are going to find many of those practical points, you know, to, to adapt to your life, okay? And this is the whole benefit behind it, okay? The one who is not interested, you just want to listen and hear, don't waste your time, you know. I'm not going to get any benefit. Because most of these had a hadith selected here, they are selected to be practiced, you know. And really, they are practical points, okay? Uh, and this book, in my view, is one of the major books to make your life practiced according to the Sunnah, the tradition of the Prophet I would like to say, even the hadith that we mentioned, you know, we are now in number 13, it sounds like theoretical. But when you look at it thoroughly, all of these ahadiths, you are going to find a lot of practice that you may change your life according to it. And let's start with this number 13, okay? To respect those who are older than us, okay? And to be merciful to those who are younger than us, and to know the rights about those who are educated or uh, religiously they are 
uh, knowledgeable, you know, among us, you know. And uh, when I hear the Prophet say, the one who did otherwise is out of our community, in an indirect way, I may feel those who practice it, they are in the community of the Prophet. What a community. A community, say the Ibrahim, say the Moses, say the Isa, they want to be in this community. A community that people, some people, during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they were out of this community. That his uncle Sallallahu Alaihi was out of the community and was Cursed, you know, in this surah, Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab. That when the Prophet passed through a grave, you know, and that person was buried this day before, and he was not able to recognize the Prophet when he was asked about him, you know, in the grave. All of us, we are going to be asked about the Prophet in the grave. And that person was in Medina. Physically with the Prophet And you may imagine how many times did he see the Prophet How many times he has some uh, communication and you name it, you know the Prophet Yet, he was not able to recognize the Prophet That means he's out of the community of the Prophet So you would like to be in the community of the Prophet Really, it's too easy. But it's too great. Okay? And this is the way. You are going to be saved thereafter? This is the way. To give it more importance? When the Prophet ﷺ has the last Hajjat Wada, we call it. What was the meaning of Wada? That he told everyone that perhaps this is the last meeting with you. Okay, this is Wada in Arabic. And when he was in Arafat, knowing that this is the last time of the last one, the, the, the last chance, you know, to stand in Arafat. And just imagine yourself, you, you, we are told this is the last, you know, last wishes, you know, last uh, dua to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was his dua, sallallahu alayhi wa Keep saying, oh Allah, forgive my community, my nation. This was his last dua, sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala. <coughs> keep saying, keep saying, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whatever from my side, I forgive all of their sins for your community. Whatever among themselves, no. 